Hello, welcome back to Go and Walkabout. In this episode, I'm going to talk about list navigation in SwiftView and especially how to perform an action when navigating a list. So it has been a while since the previous episode, but the thing is, Go and Walkabout is just a hobby project and I do not always have time to work on it. So I had a lot of other things to do. I was busy, the holidays and some other stuff. So I didn't build anything for Go and Walkabout. But I'm back and I'm on the right track because I have worked on some things. Now today I'm going to talk about Swift UI and list navigation. And the thing is that actually this took me quite some time to figure out. But I have a list and I want to navigate to some detail. But before I navigate to the detail, I want to perform an action. And I'll show you what I mean, and then I'll explain you how I actually did it and how it works. Actually quite nice and easy to implement. But it was just a little bit of work to figure it out. Now here we see my application running and I have notifications. So here you see the list with notifications. And in my case, some of these notifications can have an unread marker. And if you click on the list item, you want to set that marker to red. And also what I need to do, but that's specific for my implementation, I need to retrieve the trip based on the trip ID that is part of the notification. And I want to do that before actually, or I have to do that before I navigate to the details. So let me show you what I did. Now this is Swift UI because as you know, I'm converting my whole application to Swift UI. So I do not invest anything in a UI kit if possible. So everything will be Swift UI moving forward. And that is what I did. So let me go here. Uh, we have a notification row. Those are just the details of this particular row that you see here. To show that, I'll get back to that in a minute. Then here we have the list, it's the notification view. And what I did is I created the Z stack because I need what you see here, a hidden navigation link. And navigation is review based on a navigation view and a navigation link. So I need to have this hidden navigation link because I cannot do a navigation link per item. But Bear with me, I'll get back to that. And this is my actual list. So my list goes through my notifications and for each list, for each entry, each notification, it creates a button. That button will go to my view model and select the trip based on the notification. And then it will show the notification row that we have before. Plain list style and that's it. So this is a very simple list, but what I did is I have a list in a Z stack with a navigation link. And this navigation link is the simple thing because it shows normal destination. It needs to go to my trip view with the trip. And the trip is coming from my view model. What is my selected trip? Because there could be multiple trips in my list um, and is active. And this is where the trick is. This active allows you to navigate from code. So if you said active is false, it will not navigate, but as soon active gets true, it will actually perform the navigation. So it's not saying the list is active and then it's disabled or not. No, it's actually performing the navigation. And as you can see, I have only one navigation link for the whole list because I do not need it here inside because I do it on code. And my select trip in my view model will actually set the selected trip and then it will do the navigation because that's the active. Now let's go to the view model, the view model I have here. And that is a simple view model, get my notification and I have a published variable select the trip and the do navigation. That's what you saw in the view that I use. And when I refresh, I'll fetch my, uh, the normal thing to fetch my trips. And yes, my hack from a previous episode to deal with my tabs, but that's not really relevant. And then I have my select trip function. And as you see here, the select trip is executed on the button that is there on every row. And when we select the trip, I set my notifications to red. That's a function that I already had in the UI kit, so I could reuse it immediately. Then I go to my trip and I fetch it based on the trip ID that comes here from my notification. And when I have found the trip, I set my selected trip to the correct trip. I do my navigation and this do navigation will then trigger here in my notification view that it's active and it will perform the navigation. So what happens as soon as I click here, now let's go and click and we see we navigate to our trip. And what it actually did, I click, I execute my select trip here. 
the select trip will then set the unread mark, fetch the trip, set the selected and perform the navigation. And that's why it also works if I go to another trip, it will go to another trip. It's the same trip, but it's not a notification. I only have, oh, this goes to another one. Yeah? And this way, it actually works that you can have a list with a navigation link and before you actually navigate, you can perform an action. Now, if you never set this active to true, it will not do the navigation. So you can also create a scenario when you click on a list item, perform some action, come to the conclusion that navigation is not possible and instead show an alert. You can easily do that by just setting a different kind of flag and leave the do navigation or the active flag in my situation to false, it will not perform the navigation. It's not very well documented. There is some documentation. I had to get things from a lot of uh, places together to get this working, but now I have it working. I'm very happy with the result because it works flawlessly. And I'll probably use this in a few more scenarios that I want to implement in my application. Think about my trip list. Well, anyway, um, so it's an important part. I'm happy I solved the issue. And I'm also happy that I move forward with my Swift UE implementation. I hope you like it as well. And if you like it, please like and subscribe. It's appreciated. If you don't like it, subscribe anyway, because the next one might be better for you. And about the next one, the next thing I'm going to do for this application, I'm personally uh, liking that as well. I'm going to do a series on authentication. Now, currently I do all my authentication with um, Firebase authentication, but I only use username and password. I also want to implement Apple or login with Apple, maybe login with Google, but at the same time, I want to transition everything to Swift UI, and I don't want to make the um, registration or a login uh, mandatory before you can see something. So I want to open up parts of the application for anonymous users. So that is quite a big project to do that because in many places I need to implement checks for authentication, but I'll take it step by step and I'll make a little bit of a mini series about it, how I did that. So that's for you upcoming and also might be a reason to subscribe already so you don't miss it. And if you really don't want to miss it, also press the notification icon so you get notified. Anyway, this is it for today's episode. I'm back on track and I hope you like it and I'll see you in the next episode.